היי קובי. היי שני. We are recording our third episode today in the, the series. And the last one. And the last one in our cloud migration series, where we speak about what is cloud migration, what's the seven hours methodology, and today a real world case study of applying cloud migration process, which you'll take us through the stages and decisions that a company needs to make. And this case study is the real deal. Yes, this case study is the real deal. Uh, we will cover the case study uh, in a bit. Uh, but before we will uh, deep dive into the case study and the migration process, let's start by recapping the yes. previous two episodes of this series. Yes, yes. so let's uh, remind our listeners, I am Dr. Shani Horwitz-Rosen and I'm, and I'm speaking with the Velip CTO, Kobi Avshalom, and we are talking about cloud migrations, our first episode of... Uh, discussed what is cloud migration and what are the major steps that right. are happening in this process? That's correct. So we mentioned the four main stages of cloud migration processes. We are starting with the assessment phase, then we are moving to the plan, execution, and finally the validation stage. Right. And then we move to the second episodes where we talked about a lot of R's. Yeah, that's correct. So in the first episode, we mentioned that uh, one major part of the planning stage is choosing the right cloud migration strategy. So in the second episode of this series, we talked about the seven hours framework, how to choose the right cloud migration strategy for our use case. And what are the benefits and disadvantages of each uh, cloud right. migration strategy? It was a great episode with a lot of closet and clothes and hats uh, metaphors and examples. So be sure to check it. But today we are going to dissect a real case study. Yes. So in today's episode, as you say, we will recap all the process with a real world uh, case study for an end-to-end cloud migration uh, process. So... Let's get started. Yes, let's do. So what are we talking about? Which company? What's the process? So for this episode, we will talk about a mid-sized company, tech company uh, working in the entertainment industry. Right. A, a large, co- with a large customer base company. Uh, the company is currently and ever since uh, is running all of its infrastructure and workloads on its on-premises data centers. The company's product is composed out of four primary components. So we have the frontend, which is a React application currently running on a dedicated VM. We have two backend components. The first one is a five Go-based microservices running on top of Docker Swarm orchestration platform. The second backend is a monolithic one. The company is planning to decouple the monolithic part of the backend into Golang-based microservices, and the monolithic part is running on a dedicated server as well. And finally, we have the database, which is a MySQL database. The database is running on a dedicated VM as well. So before we start dissect everything and start to step into the shoes of the decision makers in this company, just a quick question. Is this based on a real case study that developed worked? Yes, uh, we didn't mention the name of the customer, of right. course, but the details are correct. And this is exactly the uh, a, a real customer, previous customer of Develop that we conducted this kind of process with. Successfully. Successfully. Yes. yes. All right. So after internal discussions in the company, the company decided to modernize their stack, their DevOps stack, technology stack, and migrate to the cloud. The company requested our assistance on performing that kind of immigration process with them, and we said yes. Yes. All right. Cloud migration process. Yes. So before we will deep dive into the process itself and the assessment phase, uh, let's just state something that as part of the modernization, let's say goals that the company is set for them, one primary goal is to decouple the monolithic backend piece into microservices, Go-based microservices, and migrating from Docker Swarm orchestration tool to Kubernetes cluster. Mm-hmm. And we will refer to that later in this okay. episode. So learning from you, we know that when we enter a cloud migration process, the first stage is the assessment stage. That's correct. So as we talked about in the first episode of this series, the first stage of every cloud migration process would be the assessment stage. Uh, the goal of this stage and um, 
let's call this stage as the what stage, because what we want to achieve in that stage is to answer the question of what we want to migrate to the cloud. So the goal of this stage is to assess all the different resources, existing resources that we have, map them out, everything, and decide what we want to migrate and what we don't want to migrate. Right. Yes. In the assessment stage, we can leverage the IDD mapping concept that we talked about in our DRP episode about the disaster recovery plan episode. IDD stands for? IDD stands for infrastructure, data, and deployment. Infrastructure, data, and deployment that we talked about these concepts under the DRP, Disaster Recovery Plan, in a previous episode, very successful one. Yes. So make sure to check it out. Yes. So when we are tasked to perform an evaluation of existing resources, we can split all the resources into those three categories. Once we are done with that, we actually have a clear view of what we actually answered the question of what we need to migrate. So let's get started and see how we can do that. A best practice for performing that kind of mapping would be drawing a three column table, column for each category, Mm -hmm. and starting to fill under each column the relevant existing resources as they are. So So imagine a table. Yes. In which the titles are infrastructure, data, and deployment. Mm -hmm. And under each section we're explaining what we are just filling in the existing resources that we have so okay in our use case in the infrastructure category we will have the networking components which later will be on, on aws the vpcs the subnets are uh, route tables etc the front end virtual machine the backend vn and the backend docker swarm in the data we will have the mysql database and in the deployment which are the applications of our system, we will have the front-end static React application, the five Golang uh, microservices of the backend, and the monolithical backend piece. All right. I I do want to mention that it's challenging to describe a table in a podcast episode, but you're doing it very well. But we will all have this data in an organized ebook, which we'll put the link in our show notes. Yes. So once we are done with the assessment stage and we uh, answer the question of what we have and what we want to migrate, we are moving forward to the planning phase. In this stage, we will try to answer on the how question about how to migrate the existing resources into the cloud. So let's get started with the planning stage. Mm -hmm. So the desired outputs of the planning stage are the first one is choosing the right migration strategy. Right. The Again, right R. Uh, yeah. Yes, the right R or the right R's in some right. cases. And the second one is creating the execution plan of the whole process. Okay, so we assessed what we want to migrate, and now we're planning on how to do that. That's correct. Choosing the right R strategy or strategies and... And creating a migration execution plan... For the to, actually process. Do it. to actually so do in, it. So in this case, what were the strategies that you chose? So in this case, we actually chose two. Okay, uh, two R's. Two R's, two migration strategy. So for the database and the front end, we will leverage the replatform migration strategy, uh, meaning that we will make some adjustments to the existing resources to be more fitted, let's say, to mm-hmm. the cloud, to AWS. What does that mean? That means that the uh, migrating the MySQL database from a dedicated virtual machine on our local data center to a managed MySQL database in AWS, which is the RDS uh, mm-hmm. resource, and migrating the front end from a dedicated on-premise server to a CloudFront and S3 architecture on AWS. That would be one R, one migration strategy, the replatform one that we will leverage in our execution plan. Right, replatform re- and refactor. Yes. So the second one is the refactor one. And as for the backend, we will leverage the refactor migration strategy. We will re-architecture the Docker Swarm cluster where our microservices are running into a managed Kubernetes cluster on AWS, which is EKS. And uh, in that way, we will mixture two migration strategy and this is okay yes there right. are cases when we will let's say leverage more than two migration and, and if our listeners want to know 
about the entire 7R strategies, they can definitely go back to the episode that recorded where you explained about each strategy and, and what would be the best uh, practice to use it. Yes, this is the mm-hmm. second episode of this series. Right. Yes. So the next step. So the next step or the next thing that we need to do in the planning phase is actually creating the execution plan itself. Ideally, the execution plan will address each category from the IDD model. Again, this is infrastructure, data, and deployment. Right. Separately and include uh, things like timelines, target platforms, dedicated tasks, milestone, and validation test for each milestone. Mm -hmm. It's a bit technical here, but bear with me. So in our case, the migration execution plan will look like something like this. So phase one, infrastructure provisioning. And we are creating a detailed task. So using Terraform infrastructure as a code, create and provision the following modules. We have the networking modules. We have the EKS module, the CloudFront module, the RDS module, and the EC2 module. Then we are describing the milestones. All the relevant infrastructure resources are provisioned. All the Terraform code is written with modules and not independent Terraform uh, resources. TF state file is stored on S3 bucket and TF log file is stored in the NamoDB, all the Terraform code is turned in a dedicated Git repository named Terraform Infrastructure. This is a bit technical, but... Uh, what what I hear from you is a roadmap mm-hmm. that is important to plan in advance because I hear all the necessary steps yes. to do that in order to be organized and to make sure that you thought about the whole process and the, the implications as we go along. Mm-hmm. We will have the full list of this case study in our show notes, so you can see each step that to- Kobe is talking about. Yes, it should be as, as imperative as possible. So uh, another example of a phase of a migration execution plan would be, for example, in our use case, phase two, migrate the backend five microservices to a Kubernetes cluster. So we will have here the detailed tasks as follows. We will have the create a Helm chart for each microservice, deploy and configure with Git Argo CD into the cluster, Deploy all the microservices, deployments, and an internal ingress into the cluster. The milestone here would be all the Helm chart definitions are stored in a dedicated Git repository named GitOps Helm charts. The internal ingress is deploying an internal ALB on AWS. And the validation test, for instance, will be each microservice is accessible privately from the internal application load balancer. And so on and so on, yes. So this is the the planning phase of the migration process. So again, the outputs here are choosing the right migration strategy and based on the migration strategy, we will create a detailed plan. Roadmap, yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Do develop help companies plan this very detailed roadmap? Yes, actually develop helping to uh, in three ways. Right. Companies, so different customers. So there are customers that are requesting help, like in this use case, that we will help them execute cloud migration process end to end from mm-hmm. the assessment phase to the validation phase. And that's all the process. There are some customers that are requesting help only in creating the execution plan. Right. And there are some customers that are requesting help on actually executing the plan. Right. Okay. Yes. So that's important. Right. Yes. So... After we have the planning, we finish the planning stage and we have the execution plan, we are moving forward to the third and fourth stages of the process, which are the execution and the validation phases. Mm -hmm. Yes. So with the execution plan in place, it's time to execute the migration to AWS. So ideally, the execution plan is ordered by the different dependencies of the system components. So for example... As we talked about in the planning phase in our use cases, we can't deploy any microservices without Kubernetes cluster, EKS cluster right. in place. So first we will provision the cluster right. and then we will uh, deploy the applications, the mm-hmm. microservices. So we will start to executing the execution plan by the order following the milestones and the validation. So in general, the execution stages will be as follows. So provision the relevant infrastructure, done. Store the front-end built artifacts on S3 backend and serve it with the newly created CloudFront. Again, mm-hmm. we created the CloudFront distribution earlier. Done. Restore the MySQL database into the newly created RDS. Deploy the backend, etc., etc. 
This is the execution right. part of the process. Once we are ensuring that all the pieces are in place, we will conduct the final validation test again. Mm-hmm. The final validation tests are mentioned in our execution plan. And after all the validation tests will successfully pass, we will, as in our execution plan, update the relevant DNS records, for instance, in this use case, uh, to our newly created cloud system with minimum downtime and done. And is this process the same for each case study or what you described here, the provision of relevant infrastructure and then the next steps? Is this relevant specifically to the case study that we talked about? Let's think about it like a skeleton. Right. So the skeleton Ooh. will be consistent. So yeah. each you each I hope so. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> yes. Each case study or each cloud migration case will be consist out of the principles that right. we talked about in the in this episode and yeah. the, in the uh, last two episodes. So the same stages, the same four stages, the same IDD model in right. the assessment phase, the, the validation, the test, execution, everything will be the same. The content of each stage will be different depending on the right. use case. So the decision what to the decision of what and the decision of how. Right. Yes. So it can be deferred from use case to use case. And what's the one thing from this case study that you'd like our listeners to remember or to learn? So something that I, uh, the, the, the interesting thing about this case study is that is it not a typically cloud migration process? Okay. I would say it's like a cloud native migration oh. process because it not only consists out of taking some resources, taking some workloads and deploying it from on-premises to the cloud, but it also involved things like uh, migrating from Docker Swarm platform to Kubernetes cluster. It uh, included like decoupling a monolithic backend into different microservices. So it was a really uh, interesting and challenging use case, uh, especially when we are talking about a, a semi SaaS product that right. has active customers all the time. Yeah. And yeah. So tell us about the success in this process. So actually, the company cloud migration process was a success. Right. Uh, The company aligned their business goals with their technological ones. Okay. uh, Achieved significant cost savings, again, by moving to the cloud after the internal discussion. We talked about it in the first Mm -hmm. episode, about the benefits of moving to the cloud. So the company achieved more elasticity, more robust, stable, and resilient system, and Yes, and that was a success for them and for us. Amazing. Yes. Yes. So we have what is cloud migration. We have the seven R's and we have a very successful case study in which you explained how or you you walked us through a case of cloud migration. I hope that this episode helped you to understand a bit better the process of conducting an end-to-end cloud migration process. And that's it. Amazing. Uh, we're inviting everyone to read the ebook and to contact us and you personally, right? Kobe, you're yep. on LinkedIn, Kobe of Shalom, and on Develop Magazine and our website. And you can send mails and yes. whatever you want. And if anyone listening to this cloud migration process, you can do it. Thank you, Kobe of Shalom, the CTO of Develop. And thank you, Daphne Elmagen, our amazing editor and producer. I'm Dr. Shani Horowitz Rosen. Cloud migration it is. Thank you, Kobe. Thank you, Shani.